In case you've been living under a rock for the past couple of months, this is an iceberg. These types of images have been floating around the web for years and cover a vast amount of topics and media. They start off with the most common, well-known bits of knowledge at the top, before getting more obscure the lower down you go. Recently there's been a trend to turn these images into YouTube videos, explaining more about each point to anyone interested in the subject matter. So now that's out of the way, Pingu. The classic claymation series debuted in the 1980s and has exploded in popularity around the globe. Its two show run totals over 200 episodes combined and has seen a wide range of tie-in merchandise, associated products and of course, memes. Links providing more information and timestamps to different layers will be included in the description. I'd also like to apologise in advance for any mispronunciations. There's a lot of German and Japanese words here that I've most likely butchered. This is the Pingu Iceberg Explained. Newt Newt. Pingu's iconic honking noise is a staple of both the show and the character. He often uses his newts to express a wide range of emotions, and its frequent use has led it to become the basis for tons of memes and remixes. Pinguinese. Sometimes referred to as Pinguish, this fictional language spoken by all the characters in the show mostly consists of unintelligible babbling. <laughs> it also means that the dialogue is mostly left up to the audience's own interpretation and allowed the show to be broadcast worldwide without the need for extra dubbing work. Pingu in the City Pingu in the City is an all-CG reboot of the show created by Polygon Pictures for Japanese audiences. It follows most of the basic principles from the original show, but in a new urban setting and a running theme of Pingu helping out other penguins with different jobs. It ran for a total of 52 episodes between 2017 and 2018 in Japan, before eventually being broadcast around the world. The series even includes a few callbacks to the original show's easter eggs. But most importantly, it means that Pingu is now officially recognised as an anime. Banned or censored episodes With the show being released in so many different countries, some of the episodes have either been censored or were never released at all in certain regions. The full list of these changes can be found on the Pingu wiki, but some of the more notable examples also appear in this iceberg, including our next entry, The Pingu's Dream Episode Perhaps the most well-known episode of the show, Pingu's Dream is remembered as a source of nightmare fuel for the infamous appearance of the giant walrus character. Following complaints from parents that a walrus scared many younger viewers, the episode was unofficially removed from broadcast in many countries. Some distributors even chose not to release the episode on home video at the time, but since then it's been included in various DVD releases as well as on digital platforms. To this day, his appearance has been credited as a popular source of childhood trauma. A combination of his creepy laugh, human-like teeth and the way he toys and terrorises Pingu has cemented him in the minds of many people who grew up watching the show. The Little Accidents Episode Episode 19 of Season 1, titled Little Accidents, is another well-known episode, albeit for different reasons. The story involves Pingu rushing home to use the bathroom after going out for drinks. However, after finally getting to the toilet, he ends up urinating on the floor instead. The references to these drinks possibly being alcoholic, as well as the depiction of Pingu peeing on the floor, led it to being pulled from broadcast in certain countries. Footage from the episode has also been used as a basis for several famous YTPs, further boosting its notoriety. The Pingu Dance Sequence one of the most fondly remembered sequences of the show, Pingu's dance from the season 1 episode titled Pingu Looks After the Egg has gone on to be remixed and reused in many memes over the years. In 2018 there was even a partial recreation of the scene in the Pingu in the City episode, Where is the Egg? Pingu YTPs Like with many fondly remembered shows from our childhood, Pingu has been remixed and redubbed in various videos on YouTube. For example, there's Scottish Pingu, which mostly uses footage from Little Accidents, dubbed over with comically Scottish voices. There's also an MLG style remix of the episode Pingu Runs Away, titled Pingu No Scopes His Parents, which currently has over 8 million views. Pingu Music Remixes This one refers to the song parodies on YouTube which remixes different noises from the show, mostly Pingu's signature newts, into popular songs. The most well known of these would be Pingana, a parody of Havana, as well as Pingu featuring Gorillaz, which is a remix of Feel Good Inc. High in Video Games Over the years, several official Pingu video games have been released for home and handheld systems. Three of these games were exclusive to Japan, Pingu the most cheerful penguin in the world which came out on the original Game Boy in 1993, Fun Fun Pingu on Playstation 1 in 1999, and Pingu's Wonderful Carnival on Nintendo DS in 2008. The two remaining games were both educational activity packs which were published by the BBC and were called Pingu A Barrel of Fun and Pingu and Friends, which were released in 1997 and 1999 respectively. Pingu was a British show misconception. There's a popular misconception that Pingu is a British show, when the original four seasons of Pingu were created entirely for Swiss television by Otmar Gutmann and his production company. The rights to the show were bought up by Hit Entertainment in 2001, who produced a further two seasons in 2003. 
Hit are well known for producing and licensing other popular shows, such as Bob the Builder and Bozeman Pat, which likely has led some to think that Pingu is British as well. The 1986 pilot. Several shots were produced as a pilot for a Pingu TV show in the early to mid 1980s. The 1986 pilot specifically refers to a shot that was broadcast on Swiss TV and later became the basis for the show's third episode, Pingu Looks After the Egg. Woodpeckers from Space Song. Speaking of that episode, it also features the dance sequence that appeared earlier on this iceberg. In most versions of the episode, the scene is set to one of the show's original tracks, titled The Pingu Dance. However, the scene originally featured Pingu dancing to the track Woodpeckers from Space by Video Kids, and even had a possible reference to the music video during this part of the dance. I'm in love with the <laughs> David Hasselhoff's Pingu Dance Song when used in the show, the version of the Pingu dance track is mostly instrumental, with a few of Pingu's noises mixed in. However, another version of the song was released in Switzerland with an accompanying vocal track by David Hasselhoff of Baywatch fame. While its official release was limited, the full song can easily be found online. Different Pingu openings The original run of the show had three different intros. The first season used an animated opening along with the track Kutchen Chef. Seasons 2 through 4 then recreated by intro and claymation using the show's models. The music was also swapped out for a snippet of the Pingu dance track. Seasons 5 and 6 featured a more energetic opening which was accompanied by a new jingle as well. When the series returned with Pingu in the city, the opening changed once again to match the show's new art style and setting. All the voices were originally done by one Italian man. For the first four seasons of Pingu, all the characters were voiced by Italian voice actor Carlo Bonome. He had previously developed this language of noises for an earlier animation, titled Asvaldo Cabandoli's La Linea. After Hit took control of the series with seasons 5 and 6, all the voices were instead performed jointly by David Sant and Marcello Magne. For Pingu in the City, the voice actors were replaced again by the Japanese seiyu Ryota Iwasaki and Fumuya Tanaka. Newt Newt was originally a kazoo noise. In the 1986 pilot that was detailed earlier, Pingu's signature newts were performed by a kazoo and sounded like this. Music Lessons Copyright Infringement the season 1 episode titled Music Lessons contained a copyrighted music track which the production company failed to get the rights for. They eventually redubbed the episode to feature a new piece of music later on. Pingu in the City was a top rated anime on Mao. After its debut in 2017, users of the popular anime database site MyAnimeList rushed to give Pingu in the City a perfect 10 out of 10 score as a joke. This rocketed the show up the site's top rated listings before peaking at a rating of 9.29 out of 10 on October 7th, 2017. This actually made it the site's overall highest rated anime for a few hours before being hit with thousands of 1 out of 10 ratings, eventually settling with a score of around 8 out of 10. A similar event took place in 2019 with the etchy comedy Interspecies reviewers, after Funimation stopped streaming the show and cancelled its dub. As a result, Mal ended up changing the waiting system for all of its reviews on the site, as a way to avoid this happening again in the future. One of the biggest casualties of this change was Pingu in the City, which saw its overall score drop even further into the mid-sixes. Later edits to Season 1 and 2 Later releases of Pingu on home video contain edited versions of the earlier episodes of the show. Some scenes were cut in certain regions due to controversy, while season 1 had its original opening replaced by the claymation intro and music used in later seasons. Some episodes also had their background music changed for various reasons, such as the woodpeckers from Space Entry discussed on the previous layer. The unedited versions of these early episodes can still be found on the original VHS prints. Hugo Hugo was the original name for Pingu. He went by this name in early test shots, before being renamed to Pingu for the 1986 pilot. Some of his features were also remodeled between these shots, mainly having his beak reshaped. The Pingu at the Wedding Party special Pingu at the Wedding Party was a 25 minute special produced in 1997, and remains the only episode to be longer than the show's typical 5 minute runtime. The special has never been broadcast or released in the US, and remains as the only appearance of the green coloured penguins. Hidden foul language and swear words Despite Pinguinese being a fictional mess of garbled sounds, people have pointed out that a few clips throughout the show sound awfully similar to a few certain swear words in English. <laughs> Pingu's The Thing Stop Motion Show Pingu's The Thing, also known as Fingu, was a two-minute, Pingu-themed retelling of John Carpenter's The Thing, made entirely in claymation by Lee Hardcastle. The show gained a lot of attention when it was first released in 2012, with over 1 million views in its first two weeks on YouTube, as well as coverage in several national newspapers. However, all this attention came at a price. Lee was quickly forced to take the video down by Hit Entertainment, but he has since remade the short using his original cat characters. Reuploads of the original animation can still be found online as well. Pingu's Mum Sniffs Feces This one just refers to a quick little moment in a season 1 episode titled Pingu and Pingu Don't Want to Go to Bed, and stands as a testament of the strangeness of early Pingu. After Pingu uses her potty, Pingu's mum proceeds to wipe her clean. She then immediately rubs that same tissue into her beak like it's a completely normal thing to do. 
like why why what why, why did she do that i mean if you look closely you can even see a few brown spots on there too The Pingu Show The Pingu Show is a re-edited version of the original series that broadcast in the UK and South Korea. The format involved packaging two episodes together, along with a few additional shorts and segments to create a 15-minute program that's more typical for TV broadcasts. 78 episodes were produced in this format starting in 2006, and some of the original segments, like Penguin Facts with Professor Pingu, can still be found online. The Change of Tone in Pingu The two later seasons of Pingu produced by Hit Entertainment have a much different tone in comparison to the earlier Otmar Goodman seasons, most notably with some characters such as Pingu's dad, who's less prone to anger and violent outbursts. This may have been a response to the censorship and banning of some episodes around the world, which decreased over time and ended entirely after season 4. Eskimo Disco 7-Eleven Song This was a Pingu-themed music video released in 2006 with the song 7-Eleven by British band Eskimo Disco. The footage has since been remixed into other parody videos, but the band still fondly remembers and celebrates their association with the Pingu brand. Pingu can pee into the toilet without help. In the season 3 episode titles, Pingu pretends to be ill, Pingu is able to properly urinate into the toilet successfully while standing up. This conflicts with the tragic events that happened earlier during the Little Accidents episode. Perestroika and Glasnost sign controversy There was a minor controversy in the season 2 episode Pingu's Admirer, when this signpost was shown near the end of the episode. The sign reads Perestroika and Glasnost, which refers to a series of political and economic reforms that were meant to kickstart the stagnant Soviet Union economy in the 1980s. The episode was accused of promoting communism, as the words were also written in Russian. This has led to a few popular Pingu memes and YTPs featuring communist iconography. Pingu the Movie Pingu the Movie is a non-existent entity that has been falsely spread around by fans as a piece of lost media, or a production that's been stuck in development hell. Some fans have even gone as far as writing their own summaries of the movie and uploading them to various sites to further spread rumours of its existence. It's also been cited as an alternate title to the Pingu wedding special that was covered previously. Pingu in Mugen Mugen is a popular 2D fighting game that allows users to create and share their own custom characters and stages, so of course, a Pingu fighter was added to the game in 2006 by Malumbo and features character appropriate moves, such as throwing snowballs, the Pingu ball and a projectile loot attack. Inconsistencies with the Pingu house the layout of Pingu's house is very inconsistent, especially in the early seasons. Appliances, furniture, and even entire rooms would change location constantly to fit the episode. And that's before we go into how this glue works like the TARDIS from Doctor Who, or the buildings in Spongebob, where its interior is far bigger than what's physically possible. The interior seems to be fixed by the fifth season, with Hit settling on a more consistent layout. The Pingu at the Doctor's episode The season 2 episode titled Pingu at the Doctor's starts with Pingu running face first into a table while playing with Pinga, Injuring his beak and causing him to spill blood. Don't worry though, he's quickly taken to the hospital for treatment. However, the recurring appearance of blood and honestly upsetting depiction of Pingu being in pain caused the episode to be unofficially banned from broadcast in many countries. Strangely enough, it's also the only episode to ever be banned in Poland. Pingu in the City, Unaired Pilot Much like the original 1986 short, a 90 second pilot of Pingu in the City was produced in 2016 as a proof of concept for the new series. While the pilot has been confirmed to exist, it was only ever screened privately and is now assumed to be lost media. Pingu merchandise and food products Over the decades, tons of pingu fee merchandise has been produced all around the world. This includes several standard products you'd expect to see with a children's show, such as toys, clothes, books, and several cross-promotions with fast food chains. There have also been some stranger time products, like this cool optical mouse, actual legal postage stamps, and even this strange Jolly Roger children's ride that plays woodpeckers from space. I also have to mention the food too. In addition to various types of sweets and chocolates, there are also several different Pingu themed cereals, as well as Pingu branded pizzas, bananas, yogurts, and even tea bags. Maybe that's the reason why people think that Pingu's British. Original Lost Pingu's Dream Audio After the controversy surrounding the Pingu's Dream episode, some people have claimed that the version everyone remembers has actually been edited to be less frightening. It's said that the walrus originally popped out with a spooky roar, instead of the chuckling that was heard in the original broadcast version. Some have theorised that the broadcast in France used this original version of the episode, but this is yet to be confirmed, and there's no recordings that can be found online. 8-bit version of Woodpeckers from Space In the Japanese Game Boy game Pingu the most cheerful penguin in the world, the second level begins with a cutscene that recreates part of the famous dance sequence from Pingu Looks After the Egg, along with an 8-bit rendition of Woodpeckers from Space. The scene only plays the first part of the song, however, the full version of the track can be accessed via a password before starting the game. Pingu gets impaled by a nail during the 1986 pilot, there's a scene when Pingu is bouncing around on the ball as Pingo places a nail underneath him. Pingu then lands on the nail which causes the ball to pop. Don't worry though, he's fine. The equivalent scene in the show is Pingu getting tripped and falling on top of the ball to pop it instead. And the trumpets, they go. The 
for Japanese VHS opening and ending songs. When the show was released on VHS in Japan, new opening and ending sequences were created, which also featured original music. The opening is called Pingu Rap and was composed by Masai Matsura, better known as the producer and composer of the Parappa Rapper games on PlayStation 1. The ending track, titled Seeds of Happiness, is performed by Emre, also known as Rei Miyajima. Full versions of both tracks were later released on the Pingu single CD in 1993 and can be found online. Penguin Dystopia slash War Theory This refers to a fan theory that the original Pingu series takes place in a post-war dystopia. Throughout various episodes there are signs of poverty and deprivation, as well as references to Soviet Russia. In the episode Pingu and the Organ Grinder, a penguin is shown to be depressed and living in squalor. There's also a scene in Pingu Helps to Deliver the Mail, where Pingu's dad consoles a grieving mother while Pingu tears up. This could imply that the letter he delivered informed the mother that her son's life was lost in the war. Official Pingu Flash Games There were several official online flash games produced for the show by different license holders, such as the BBC for their CBeebies website. Pingu's jigsaw has been saved on archive.org and can be accessed if you install Adobe Flash. Meanwhile, a few others like Pingu Keep Yuppie, Crazy Sledging and Dominoes were all hosted on sites that are now defunct. However, you can still play those by installing Flashpoint. There's also a whack-a-mole themed game called Something Fishy, or Pingu's Fish Slap depending on which version you found. However, this game is now considered to be lost media. Pingu Gets a Warning was banned in Japan This season 4 episode was banned in Japan for unknown reasons. It's been theorised that this is due to Pingu and Pingo getting chased with a carpet beater after their kites are confiscated by Mrs. Pengsniff, because of course they deserve to be taken for the crime of having them gently brush against her towels. However, the Japanese blogspot page, Kupu Kupu Information Bureau, offers some alternative reasons behind the ban. They suggest that the themes of the episode wouldn't resonate with Japanese audiences well. This could be due to there being no clear sense of accomplishment by the end of the episode, as Pingu doesn't get his kite back or really learn any relevant lessons. They also theorise that Mrs. Pengsniff could be seen as a negative depiction of people living in poverty, having littered scattered around her house and being overly hostile towards her neighbours. Pingu Horse Spieler Pingu Horse Spieler, which translates to Pingu Radio Plays, was a long-running series of German audiobooks that were released on cassette between 1993 and 2001. Despite never being re-recorded in other languages, the tapes were a major success and sold over 1 million copies combined. The series was later re-released on iTunes, SoundCloud and Spotify, so check them out if you're fluent in German. Pingu's Punishment Creepypasta It's fairly common for creepypastas to be written about different children's TV shows, so it's no surprise to see one made about Pingu. This story covers the search for a lost episode of the show called Pingu's Punishment that the author remembers from their childhood. They end up finding a video online that features various characters from the show being killed in different ways, along with creepy music and unsettling footage. These are all fairly common tropes for this genre of creepypasta. Pingu and Robbie are secretly in love I can't believe we're this far down and I'm only just now mentioning Robbie the Seal. As Pingu's best friend and most recurring character of the show outside of Pingu's family, he's always popping up to cause trouble. However, it's speculated that Pingu and Robbie are also secretly in love. There's a few scenes in the early episodes that show them hugging and enjoying each other's embrace multiple times. And then there's also this bit where they rub their faces together in Pingu plays ice hockey, which could be seen as them kissing. Robbie is also the only non-family member character from the original show to return in Pingu in the city. And since he doesn't appear until the 11th episode of the show, it could be theorised that he missed Pingu too much and moved to the city on his own, just to be with him. Pingu Goes to the Studio Pingu Goes to the Studio was a lost special that was only ever included on a single best of DVD release in Japan. The roughly 8 minute special shows some of the behind the scenes footage for the series, with Japanese narration going through the different processes. Due to its limited release, it was considered lost for many years, before the whole DVD was ripped and uploaded to YouTube in 2017. The walrus appeared in other Otmar Gutmann shorts before Pingu. The giant walrus from Pingu's Dream was actually a puppet that Otmar Gutmann created at some point in the 1970s. Before Pingu, it appeared in this animation reel for his production company, which shows the walrus speaking German on a black background. This demo reel also features an early version of the Pingu model as well, back when he was still known as Hugo. And that brings us to the end of the Pingu iceberg. Thank you for making it this far, and I hope you've learned a few new facts about everyone's favourite claymation penguin. This entire project has honestly been a lot of fun, and I've only really scratched the surface on some of these entries. Loads of these topics could easily be explored more and turned into full videos, and that's on top of all the strange oddities that we didn't even cover. So if the idea of a Pingu-centric channel sounds interesting to you, then stick around, because I'm planning on making more videos exploring the series in the future. Finally, I'd like to give a special shout out to Mario Obsessed for making the iceberg image that originally inspired this video, as well as working with me to fill it out with more trivia. You can find links to their channel in the description below.